Assalamu alaikum everybody and welcome back to the podcast. If you're new here, my name is Mihad and this is my podcast or show wherever you're at. It's basically a podcast where we focus on self-improvement through Islam and just generally girl talk. So I've been doing this Ramadan series where each week I do like a check-in with you guys and then I do a topic of y'all's choice or my choice following it. So it's week three, which is crazy because my brain does not like register four week Ramadan versus like three groups of 10 days, if that makes sense. So the fact that like last week people were saying like, oh, the last 10 days starts in like a few days. I was like, what? Like that? I, this is for me the fastest Ramadan like that I've ever had and I feel like as you get older it just gets faster and faster and faster unfortunately but I hope everyone is taking advantage of Ramadan this year and of the last 10 days so I wanted to do an episode where I talk about the 10 things that I'm going to be doing um, or that I'm going to try to be doing in the last 10 days so that it can motivate you guys and then you guys can comment well you can't comment on here but you can DM me or you can I don't know like ugh, I wish podcasts had a comment section that's literally why I made the patreon because I was so annoyed by like the fact that I wanted to do podcasts but I couldn't get like a comment section but anyways my patreon girlies will be letting me know what they think so that's good um but yeah I want to be able to benefit you guys you guys benefit me all of that good stuff so like I said before we go into the topic I like to do like check-ins with you guys like how's our Ramadan going how's everyone feeling and just kind of giving you guys my experience to see if anyone relates okay but I feel like at this point in Ramadan like people start to forget like what day it is like with the exhaustion and like they just don't know we don't know what's going on okay we don't know what's going on but I have some really exciting things coming up tomorrow I have a flight to Texas that's so exciting I'm so happy and blessed that I got to do Ramadan with my husband and now I get to experience it with my family and friends he's also coming for our aid but like a little bit later so I'm so freaking excited for that um because just like seeing all my friends on their socials like post about our masjid like I miss it so freaking much I miss it I miss it so that's really fun um another fun thing something so freaking fun is that I started a YouTube channel and like I had had like a video up before but I hated it so I literally privated it so fast um but I basically started a YouTube channel a couple days ago and I am having the time of my life I think I said that podcast was like my favorite thing to do and it is because I love talking but like YouTube I get to talk and show you guys stuff so it's literally a mix of both like Instagram and podcasting it is so fun y'all it is so fun if you don't follow me or if, god I'm new to this if you're not subscribed to me on YouTube please go do so and watch my videos I have three videos out right now um one of them is like a vlog and then the other two is this new segment i started like one of the girls in the patreon it suggested that i do like a chit chat chai video which is basically where i make chai and then i sit down and i chit chat and by chit chat i mean freaking talk to you guys for an hour because i don't know when to shut up but it's okay because i know that you guys like the content and you like the longer podcast episodes and youtube videos and all that stuff so that has been so exciting it's been a childhood dream of mine to become a youtuber when i'm older i'm gonna become a youtuber i tried to become a youtuber when i was little but my mom found out and she like made us delete everything so <laughs> i feel like everyone has collectively had that experience where they tried to like go um, into fame and then we all got humbled so fast but that's also what i've been doing um what else i feel like okay so i also got my period like seven days ago so this whole week was like my period week so i can definitely relate to the tiktoks i see where people are like when i get my period in the last 10 days and they like hit their head on the wall or something like that because it does suck and the thing is like i have i always told you guys that i always have two kind of like people in my brain just battling each other all the time so one of them's like oh my god you're on your period you can't do anything you're gonna disconnect from ramadan and you haven't done anything and you suck and then the other person is like all rainbows and sunshine like are you kidding me you're doing great for what you can be doing and you're getting rewarded for the things that you want to be doing um guys if you don't know 
did you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like, if you're about, if you intend to do, like, a good deed, so let's say before you got your period, you intended this entire week to be praying and in the masjid and all that stuff and doing Quran and ibadah and all that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you for the deed, it, even if you didn't do it. He gives you one full good deed, but if you did do it, he gives you more reward. However, there's so many things we can be doing as girls on our period or on our menses. I like that word, menses. Um, there's so many things we can be doing. Like, So you're telling me we're already getting good deeds for things we didn't even do. Like people are praying tarawih and we don't even have to pray and we're getting the deeds. Come on, like bro, we are low-key have the cheat code. It's not, it's not like a negative thing, but it does suck because mentally, if you're not like actually physically doing the acts of worship, then you are going to feel a little bit disconnected from Ramadan and from your deen. So my advice for that is what I like to call keep the fire going. Okay, so what I did, even though I got my period, is I still took my butt to Tarawir. I still, because you know why? You know why I went to Tarawir? Now, I'm not, I didn't go every single night because obviously my brain won sometimes and was like, you don't have to go. Like, you literally can't pray. What are you going to do? And I was super tired. Also, like, periods deplete you. My cramps were so bad and all that stuff. So we do have, like, what's it called? A little bit of leg room. Leg room whatever when it comes to not doing exactly what we were doing before however i still went sometimes and if someone can tell me the ruling on if women can be in the musalla when people are praying i don't know if that's like a rule for fard or for tarawih but i heard it's better for people on their period to be not in the musalla but um i don't know if that's like if your musalla is closed or open anyways i was in the back while everyone's praying and I'm literally reading English Quran, like the translation, while he's reciting. And it connected me more than literally anything else. Because guess what? Now I know what I'm reading. I'm reading the story of Yusuf. I'm reading the story of the aunt. I'm reading the story. Like, I'm reading with him, the sheikh. And it's so exciting because I just feel like there's still so much we can do to connect with our deen and going to the masjid. Like, made me still feel connected you know like you just have to put in the effort i feel like to feel connected so if you're on your period don't think like okay now that i'm on my period i can do literally whatever i want i can listen to music or i can like just scroll on my phone all day or i don't have to go to the mess shit or i shouldn't like you know do stuff still do your same routine girl still do your same routine um but yeah that's my advice anyways anyways <laughs> um so as for the check-in, like, in terms of how am I feeling religiously, I, and this might be, like, a personal problem, I always feel like I'm not doing enough, or I am not enough in general, so I'm working on that, um, reframing my thoughts to every day is a new day, I can do better today than I did yesterday, I don't have to beat myself up for not doing enough yesterday, because Allah subhanahu wa sees that I'm trying, and I can instead, instead of beating myself up, make dua that he allows me to have more of like a drive to do extra acts of worship in this month so yeah there's that i'm like stressed because i feel like this is like a weird part of ramadan it's like you just finished like three weeks everyone's kind of burnt out and now you have to push for the last 10 days and it's like you feel excited nervous anxious um motivated exhausted like everything this is like pushing muslims to their like this is really like seeing what you can be if that makes sense but in an exhausted state especially those of you who are working and doing school may allah to reward you i don't know if you knew but anything you do for the sake of allah and in his name is an act of worship so literally studying to become a smarter muslim and provide for your family or um all that stuff is literally worship. So you are worshiping, girl. Don't think because you were at school all day and had to study all night that you are not worshiping. You are worshiping. Obviously, it's important to add other acts of worship in there in the little sandwich. But just a little motivation for you that you are doing great. And if you don't think you're doing great, guess what? That's a good thing. Because if you have the drive to do better, you can do better. Oh, my God. I'm so motivational, right? I'm actually speaking to myself, everyone, if you're wondering. I'm speaking to myself, trying to motivate myself for these last 10 days because even though, like I said, it's not like a negative thing to be on your period, it definitely takes like a toll mentally. So I'm so excited because I think I get off my period tomorrow. 
and I'm like ready to go ham. Oh, not ham. Sorry. I'm ready to go crazy ballistic. Um, inshallah, inshallah. I am nervous though, because I'm going to, um, like I said, I'm going to Texas and then I'm going to be around a lot of people I know. And I want to make sure I still focus on my worship and my ibadah and it doesn't get like more of like the social aspect of Ramadan. So nervous for that. But that being said, I think that that was literally one of my points. So let me get into the 10 things for the last 10 nights. So we all know Laylatul Qadr. If you don't know what Laylatul Qadr is, it's a night, a very, very important and blessed night in um, Ramadan. Whoever observes Laylatul Qadr with faith and seeking the reward, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will forgive them for all of their previous sins. Oh my gosh, cheat code for money off for real. Like, imagine all your previous sins. Imagine, you know how like reverts when they come to Islam, all their sins are being erased. Wow. That's like literally confirmed. Now this one, it's like we have to actually like achieve it and like make sure we caught Laylatul Qadr. And I'll talk about it later, but like catching Laylatul Qadr is a little bit more complicated than I thought. But the reward of what you do on Laylatul Qadr, literally that night is greater than 1,000 months. Are you kidding me? Like imagine sitting and reading Quran for 10 minutes on Laylatul Qadr and literally it counts for 1,000 months of you reading Quran. Like that's crazy. That's actually insane. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. Number one, removing all sins. Thank God. And then and then rewards for a thousand months. Insane. Insane. Anyways, um so like I was saying, I'm gonna start with number one of the ten things that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remember and I'm going to try to implement in the last ten days. So number one is I'm trying to implement the mindset that every day is a new chance, like every single day, okay? And this whole idea that we should only be focusing on the odd nights is problematic because what if we got Ramadan wrong? Like what if we sighted the moon wrong and then we are like a day behind and the even days could be the odd days and the odd days could be the even days. Anyway, scholars say that we should focus on all of the 10 days because you never know. So I'm definitely going to try to take that advice. It is, I feel like on the odd nights, we're so motivated. And then on the even nights, we're like, it's okay. It's not today. But who knows? Like literally, who knows? Allahu alam. Allah knows best. I think we should focus on all the nights, which is obviously harder said than done. Easier said than done. What the heck? Brain rot. Um, but the number one was that every day is a new chance because I talk about this all the time down with perfectionism, y'all. Like we are not trying to be perfect. We're not trying to think to ourselves, oh, my friend read the whole Quran this Ramadan and I haven't even picked it up. No, because today you're going to pick it up, babe. Down with perfectionism. Just try to be better. You know, you know what I mean? Sorry for yelling. I'm only on number one and I'm already yelling, bro. Y'all know how I get. Sorry. Okay, number two spend the day learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I noticed that my Ramadan nights were like only good beneficial all that stuff after Maghrib or like literally after Aisha sometimes which is crazy because that sets the tone for your night so if you spend the whole day on your phone when you get into salat in the night you are not gonna be like having focus or khushur like you're not you're gonna be literally having tiktok audios in your brain um the Ariana Grande song like it's gonna it's gonna be in your brain we can't be friends you see what i'm saying like i know that's playing in your head when you're praying stuff for allah so we need to spend less of the day just like treating it like a normal day and like actually trying to be our best self so something i've been doing is um replacing like shows or things like ugh, i need to be better at replacing my phone but in terms of like shows and stuff i replaced it with lectures which is really good because then i literally feel more religious and more motivated because guess what i've been listening to lectures all day i'm increasing my knowledge and guys the more a person learns about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more that they'll love him and the more that they'll fear him so keep keep learning like we don't know enough this the freaking five years of sunday school knowledge is not enough for us i swear these kids be knowing more than me the things i forgot but it's so important to learn about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the more you learn the better your worship is going to be. Because guess what? Now you know more about who you're talking to, who you're making dua to. Uh, you know who you're praying to, who you're meeting every day for five times, even more, inshallah, Ramadan. But I think it's so important because free time is scary. Like I was talking about this in my YouTube video that I just can't believe that I'm going to have to be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I, he's going to ask me what I did with my time. 
and and i'm supposed to tell him that in ramadan i wasted my time like are you kidding me it is so scary like the fact that we have to answer for everything but if you are always trying to improve every aspect of your life especially dean wise then you inshallah inshallah we will all have like a better experience on the day of judgment to not just like fall short in those areas in our life you know we can say that we were trying and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see that we were trying um so like i said spend the day learning about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not just about the night um number three actively try not to sin um it's crazy how much we sin but we don't clock and i've noticed this because if i sit with myself for like literally i'm not kidding one hour or like a couple hours and i'll be like okay i'm literally not going to sin at all nothing i am clocking all of the sins that i'm doing and i'm like oh my gosh didn't even notice that what about this what about this what about this and i'm not saying this to get you in like a doom mindset but i'm saying this as like to give you guys more perspective of how much forgiveness we should be asking for because one of the dies i like to make is ya allah forgive me for the sins of the past the sins of today and the sins of the future and then also i think i talked about this in a podcast and also forgive me for the sins that i know of and the sins that i don't know of literally there are so many things we're doing that we don't even clock as sins because we're just so not detached but like just we disassociate i think for real um from all the things that we do so definitely i think that if you actively try not to sin you become more aware and more in tune with your repentance with with you asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you and i'm talking even like okay so people who haven't like given up like tiktok and and instagram reels and stuff like in these last 10 days try and mute it or try and delete the app like do things that you didn't do in the other parts of ramadan you know that's what i'm gonna try to do um music backbiting uh missing salat uh, how will we act with others like everything just try your best to be your best self like imagine it's like a little trial period of who you could be if you put in the utmost effort and inshallah we take it with us after ramadan okay number four be hopeful and confident uh, but write small goals so i say this because i feel like if you are like me and you kind of beat yourself down a little bit maybe a lot of bit and think like oh like um my friends went to qiyam or my mom like stays up for qiyam and i couldn't even wake up like i missed my alarm or i didn't read enough quran all that stuff i say stay hopeful and stay confident because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for you to come to him he's waiting for you to put in that effort but write down small goals so you can actually feel accomplished so the thing i did is i made a to-do list and i'm trying to do it for each night and let me literally read to you i showed it on youtube but let me literally read to you my to-do list from yesterday even though i wasn't praying so it was sunday the 22nd night and i wrote read surah al-ikhlas three times because apparently it is literally the reward of reading or reciting the whole quran like isn't that crazy that's another mercy from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's literally just and learning the meaning of this one too i just like i just started y'all like literally last week maybe a few days um after but i started learning the meanings of the small surahs that we know and it's just so much easier for me to focus when the sheikh is reciting or when i'm literally reciting it because i know what's being said like we are supposed to know the quran we're supposed to study it and we're supposed to learn it and we don't and that's crazy and we should anyways um the second thing i wrote is follow along with the sheikh because i was on a period um i did i put do dhikr in your breaks like literally walk into the car dhikr constantly having dhikr on your lips and in your like free time is just such a like hack for always feeling connected and we all know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that remember me and i will remember you so if you remember him all day guess what inshallah he's gonna remember you all day um so i hope that for all of us um and then the last thing i had on my to-do list was to donate because we should be donating every single night we should be doing it all the time actually but for these last 10 days imagine you donate ten dollars on one of these days and it falls on later so that is literally you donating for more than a thousand months that's crazy we need to use it like don't don't beat yourself up just do little things and inshallah you will get rewarded for them um so that's the small goals i was talking about and then after the small goals you achieve them okay now you feel great now that's a hit of dopamine now do some more you see what i'm saying add more 
Okay, number five. What do I do in the day? What? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, basically, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier about, like, not just starting it at Maghrib or whatever. Um, doing things in the day because it will... Did I already do this one? Okay, I guess I have, like, an extra one because I was basically saying it doesn't just switch. I mean, same thing as before Ramadan. Like, if we were working on our goals before Ramadan, it would have been so much easier to transition into Ramadan as opposed to those of you who didn't do anything like before Ramadan and then we tried to like switch the first day and it didn't last unfortunately so same thing with the days of the last 10 days spend the day worshiping even though it's not like the nighttime and then your nighttime will also follow that same routine inshallah okay number six starting at maghrib not at tarawir so this is something that i literally saw a lecture about today Today, I saw a video of Amr Sulaiman literally saying that most people lose their Laylatul Qadr before Aisha even starts. Why? Because they spent iftar, gossiping, and all that stuff. So, I was like, wait, you can lose your Laylatul Qadr? Are you kidding me? Like, what if I, like, <clears throat> oh my god, we're just, it's just so scary. So, basically, imagine you're just, you said a wrong joke or you commented on a girl's like outfit and you were rude about it and not guys i'm not talking about the meanest of the mean like we actually just the smallest things are considered backbiting and i want to do an episode about it because it's so real especially with the whole but i love her but like she's so annoying kind of like um tone that we like to validate ourselves with we're like oh no but like i'm not trying to say anything bad it's just like um i don't know why she would do that you know what i'm saying like i don't realize that that's such like a huge thing in islam backbiting it but like we think it's like the super mean version of like yeah i don't like her whatever like she's the worst no it's literally so subtle and that's why it's so scary because we overlook the subtle sins but anyways back to this point um the night like your ramadan night starts as soon as like the maghrib and then goes off like it's not just after tarawih when the night gets quiet and like now it's like vibey and you have qiyam and you have all that stuff it literally starts at maghrib which is so scary because it's really allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to see like okay here's the food that you've been waiting for all day here's all of your like community around you what are you gonna do are you gonna remember me or are you going to like prioritize being social and not and like falling into sin just like we do regularly you see what i'm saying so that's something i want to focus on just like getting into the zone of the last 10 nights after maghrib not not later like after tarawir okay um number seven understand what i'm asking for one of the biggest things that helped me connect with like ramadan or like ibadah and even repentance is literally understanding what i'm asking for so i don't know about y'all but i have been in like my whole life when i stand in dua for witr with the imam i never knew what he was saying like obviously it's in arabic and i don't understand arabic so it was like hard for me to focus in my duas and so at first i just tried to like i understood like a few words like the qabal is accept or like um you know what i mean like those things but it wasn't enough and so I suggest going home and doing your own du'a after, or if you're staying at the masjid, doing your own du'a after, and I don't even mean by yourself. Literally open YouTube, and it'll be the same du'a, because a lot of the sheikhs use the same like long du'a, and it has English meaning, so I want you to like listen to them and read the meaning, so that the next times that you're in with or with the sheikh, and you're at the masjid, you're low-key understanding some of the stuff. And I feel like a lot of my understanding came from, like, when I was working, and I did, like, the morning of God every day. The video that I used, which I'm going to link under this um, podcast, was, um, actually, I put it on the Patreon, too, but I'll put it on here or on my story. <clears throat> Remind me if I don't. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, I feel like that video helped me so much, because every morning i would hear the same du'as or same dhikr and then i would also see the meaning so i was like period like now i'm understanding i'm asking for allah to let me into jannah i'm asking for to forgive my sins i'm asking for protection for the whole day i'm asking for i, I say that i seek refuge all that stuff like i didn't understand before 
you will connect so much better by understanding. And that's why I was talking about earlier with actually reading the Quran with the Sheikh and reading the meaning is so much more beneficial because you're actually connecting with it. You know, like, I feel like we always try to focus on quantity in Ramadan, which is good, but like quality. Like my older sister was telling me, if you just focus on one surah, like قُلُوا الله أحد, the whole like last 10 days, you're so focused on connecting with that surah and you're reciting it all the time and <clears throat> you're seeing like the tafsir all that stuff is so beneficial because now you're going to spend the rest of your year praying and if you pray with that surah you're going to be actually understanding you know what i mean quality or quantity for real um but i don't know if that's islamic so do both lol okay number eight be alone as much as you can and I know you guys probably think I'm saying this because I literally moved away from my family and friends, so I have to be alone, but no, I straight up think that this experience, like Ramadan away from home, has been such like an eye-opening experience for me because I had to learn how to be a Muslim by myself. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, away from the people that pushed me my whole life, I have to see like what kind of Muslim am I, and I have a lot of reflections about that because... It, you really don't know who you are as a Muslim until you like see who you are by yourself. So if you are surrounded by a good community, alhamdulillah, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that and allow him, ask him to keep that in your life. However, definitely try to stay a little bit away from the super social aspect of Ramadan. Like if you're staying with your girls for Qiyam, but y'all are spending the whole time chit-chatting, I it was that girl and I loved being that girl. I miss it so much. However, I wasted so much time because I literally prioritized like being with friends and like treating it like a sleepover instead of what it really is. And that's just what growing up is. You start to realize the important things in your life and then you just have to choose your priorities. So what's your priority this Ramadan? What's your priority in the last 10 days? Is it to hang out with friends or is it to focus on your worship? This is crazy that I sound like my mom. She would literally be like clapping if she heard me right now. She's like, finally, I told you. I was always trying to tell you. Thanks, mama. So sweet to me. Um, but I'm actually nervous for like how I'm going to be and how the rest of my Ramadan is going to go when I go back to Texas and I see my friends and family because now, now literally Allah SWT is testing me in both ways. He's like, how are you alone and how are you with friends and how does that differ? And I'm so nervous. Oh my gosh, guys. Hopefully, I do well. Hopefully, I don't fall back into, like, being super social and I focus on my worship. Um, there's definitely a good balance of both. I definitely think that friends and family can push you in the in the best and right way, which I have experienced that, alhamdulillah. But there's nothing comparable to... S- worship when you're alone why because sincerity sincerity is one of the most important things in islam like you can't just ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and like not care you know what i mean like yeah yeah yeah. please forgive me like you stuff you can't do that like you actually have to really want it and really think in your head like i am never gonna do this sin again and i know that a lot of you guys were saying like sometimes it's hard for you to deep the fact that like you ask for forgiveness even though you know almost for a fact that the next day you are going to probably do it again. Um, Keyword probably, babe. In that moment that you're making du'a, think that you are never going to do it again. For real. That's not, it's not sincere if you don't. Now, if you do it again tomorrow, okay, repent again, repent again, repent again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who sin and repent. And that's who we are as humans. So get to it, girl. But yeah, I think there's so much sincerity in solitude because no one's watching. You're not impressing anybody you're not um i don't know you know what i mean like it's just so it's it's really shows who you are and how far you're willing to go if you are worshiping like by yourself because it speaks volumes i feel like it's getting late and that's why i'm starting to like not babble but like my words are not making sense (laughs) my words are not making sense so good thing i have only two more um Okay, number nine, put my phone away. Put your phone away. Y'all know that Dance Moms meme? You preach theater etiquette to our kids, put your phone away. And then Abby Lee Miller just pulls her wheelchair back, or I don't know what it was. 
I love that meme. But basically, what I'm trying to say is, and I don't know if y'all feel this too, or maybe I'm the only one who's freaking fiercely addicted to my phone. It is so embarrassing. I feel like an iPad baby. Like, I actually feel like an iPad baby. Because why am I on my phone on the way to Tarawir? Like, why can't I, why am I not doing dhikr? Okay? Also, doing dhikr. Did I talk about dhikr yet? Oh, sorry. That's the next thing. <laughs> Oops. Spoiler. Um, but our phone is such a huge huge distraction like i feel like i'm refreshing every social media page and i should have just deleted them but um i wanted to do a balance of like posting beneficial things in ramadan like this podcast and my youtube and things like that to replace music or things that you guys were watching before but i'm gonna start leaving my phone at home because i want to disconnect and the brain like our brains can't sit and read quran for an hour after scrolling for an hour guess why because our brains on tiktok are literally expecting different stimulation every single time we scroll with our finger and so then we try and sit in the quran and we don't like it we don't enjoy it we don't like we can't physically sit for a lot long because we're becoming ipad babies <laughs> and we can't do that so i definitely think like i was talking about earlier not spending your whole day like scrolling and like not um filling your free time with just your phone is beneficial not only for the moment but also for the rest of your day like it really does set the tone um okay number 10 the last one is a little bit of everything and now i literally can't even take credit for this because someone dm'd me no didn't dm me i think it was i think it was on my youtube channel I asked for I asked to com I asked them to comment tips for Laylat al Qadr and someone was like, oh you know what let me freaking read it. Nope, it was on the Patreon of course, um, but someone commented. Also, a tip for Laylat al Qadr is to time every act of ibadah or worship you are doing so that you do a little bit of everything. For instance, you can read Quran for an hour and then dhikr for an hour and so on. That way, you'll be able to maximize your time and get diverse good deeds for all the different acts of ibadah that you're doing. Guys, we know that Laylat al Qadr is equal or more to a thousand months. So, why are we not doing a little bit of everything so that we have those rewards for that entire time? So, for example, if you spend the whole night like stressing about like how much you're going to pray, you may have forgotten to do dhikr or Quran or all that stuff. So, the things that I wrote down that I'm going to try to do a little bit of everything of is dhikr. So, I want to fill my free time with dhikr. Today on the way back from the masjid, I wrote down like how many dhikrs I wanted to do and then I literally did them on the way home, which is just such a good way to like use your free time you know i was not listening to anything i was not like talking to anyone it's just solitude and dhikr and remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so i really loved that and it made me feel connected um dua i think dua is obviously so important for later qadr why because this is the night where your life i think it's i don't know if it's like your whole life or i think it's the next year yeah the next year of your life is like written like the decree is set however dua on Laylatul Qadr can literally change your life like it can change what was written so that's why it's so important to spend the nights making dua what do you want what do you want your life to look like and guys I'm so sorry or I'm actually not sorry <laughs> sorry Demo Lovato. um use the opportunity to ask for whatever you want if you want and guys okay there's two things whatever you want ask for it i don't care how like easy it is if you want a new laptop if you want to feel closer to Allah, i think we like forget about how much we can actually ask for materialistic or spiritual or anything literally anything like it doesn't have to be of course like the the popular du'as are very very good and important they're the they're the prophet's du'as the quranic du'as and du'as of the prophets but you can also make your own and i feel like it'll make you feel so much more connected to islam and to allah because you are asking the provider to provide you with whatever you would like now obviously everything you ask like follow it with like accept my du'a if it's good for me or take it away if it's bad for me like an istikhara du'a because we really don't know what's best for us we are literally bugs <gasps> get the reference i'm kidding um so like i said very important to ask for literally whatever you want and then what was the second thing i wanted to say hmm i forgot okay anyways um so yeah doing du'a 
Um, number three, helping. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but I want to spend a thousand months helping others or feeding others because how many good deeds is that? To feed a fasting person, to help people at the masjid, pass out water. Like you see what I'm saying? Like those things are so important and they're also considered acts of worship. Even smiling, smiling to people. You know, like you're already doing so much if you're a, if you're someone who smiles at everyone. Like continue, continue. Um, and then the fifth one is prayer. I can't wait to pray again for real. Like I think I get to shower tonight, so I'm really happy about that. Um, if you are not praying, I already talked about that. Don't fret. Don't fret. Um, and then the last one is Quran. I feel like Quran is like the one thing I didn't fully like get into this Ramadan, and I wish I did. And although sometimes it makes me uncomfortable to share these things with you guys, I feel like it really helps you guys see that um, there are people out there who also struggle with things. And so just because there was an area that you weren't too like strong in, whether yours was prayer or modesty or dua or dhikr, you still have time. And I think take advantage of doing a little bit of everything. And because I feel like that's something that you can take with you after Ramadan too, which probably next week's episode is going to be what to take with you after Ramadan, but I don't know yet, so keep that a little secret. But yeah, so those are my 10 things for the last 10 nights. I feel like every year um, Ramadan just becomes so different, like just experiences, feelings, connections, locations, like every Ramadan is different, so, and we don't know if we're going to make it to the next Ramadan, so ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach next ramadan and finish this ramadan strong to accept all of our duas and give us what is best for us and take away what is not good for us um ami allahumma amin i hope you guys finish strong like i said and don't lose hope that's what i want you to take away from this because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and do not lose hope in that because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is who you think he is he is who you view him as so if you view him as merciful he is merciful so believe in it believe in it believe in it believe in it uh love you guys as always assalamu alaikum i will see you next week bye <laughs>